I do it in a video, don't interrupt. <laughs> Why are you coming home at this hour? <laughs> Why are you coming home right now? You don't have a curfew. Huh? Yeah. So why are you coming home right now? So I said, go, madam. And I'm going to take a picture of her and I'm going to come on. So you know that you're supposed to come home by 5.30? 5.30? Of course. Because people are going to worry about you if you come home this late. Don't let it happen again. I'm finishing the video. <laughs> Seriously? I do it Hi. <laughs> okay. You have to come out. Come on now. Sure. Yeah. So, and you can carry the cat. Even though I'll probably show him at the end. But anyways, yeah, the guy, right? Roxanne, come on, I can do the video when you're in there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Jared, yeah. So, sorry. So, the guy, right? And, like, I carried it all the way into my 20s. Like, even, I said, you would be becoming, you would be an, young, a young adult. And you're still carrying the same things from you were a child. Now, isn't that just ridiculous? So, somehow, I heard that he was one of the persons that, I needed to to talk to and it was a real challenge for me because it and that's what pride does to you it will prevent you from doing what is right it holds on to you it makes you feel as if you will be the small person if you reach out to somebody some enemy or person you somebody you consider to be an enemy that's what pride does that's what the enemy does to you so I took it as a challenge right so I said to God, I said, all right, God, you're, you're telling me about that guy. I said, the next time I'm walking to work and I see him, I am going to say hello. So I felt as if it was this agreement that I had with the Lord. So I remember I came off the bus and I was walking up the road. Da, 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 and I saw his car coming down the road. And like I hear, I kept hearing, Sandy, this is it, this is it, this is it. And as the car got closer... I could not do it. I I just I couldn't stretch my hands to say hi. And the car, he looked at me and I looked at him and the car just passed me. And like when you make an agreement with God and you break it. If you've ever had that experience, you know what it feels like. I felt so disappointed in myself. I felt as if I had done something wrong. Like I could, I could give it out to God about it because he was there prompting me, Sandy, here he is. And I was even told that he would pass, that we would pass each other at a specific time and that it had to be done. And, and I didn't do it and I felt so bad. <laughs> so, um, after that I said, listen, the next time I'm gonna do it. So, you know, I gear up and say, yeah. I'm now fast with the next time I'm gonna say hi. Watch. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, man. Don't meow. Um, yeah, so I'm not passing with the next time and I don't say hi. I, I think it was a week after I was walking to work <laughs> and I I saw the car coming down the road. And I saw him and can I tell you as he got closer to me, I almost stepped out in the road. <laughs> I almost stepped out in the guy's car and I was like, and I waved to him and he looked at me and he was so surprised. He was so shocked. And then kind of gave me a little wave like, oh, well, I want to go with that girl like this morning. She didn't normally talk to me. I want to her. So, and it was so funny when I waved to him at his response. It was so funny. And I remember I went into work and I called Nikita and I'm like, Nikita, you know, I said hi to him and you was almost crashing the car. And we laughed. And a load was just lifted off of me, right? And I sent him a message on Facebook and I, I apologized. I told him that I'm sorry for not talking to him all these years. And, you know, and I, I sort of explained to him why I think I reacted that way. But I told him that I was sorry. And 
he said you know it's fine he just thought I was very antisocial and and stuff and I explained to him I told him about the incident with my friend in the car that he said she was fat and do you know that the guy didn't even remember he was like what incident now are you talking about he didn't even remember so a lot of things that we're holding on people for people don't even know that we're holding it against them so so I'm gonna come in. So um, that was one of my biggest breakthroughs in terms of not allowing malice to hold me anymore. And you know there were some other significant breakthroughs as well. So what I'm saying though, just to reiterate to what I said before, can you decide, can you make a conscious decision to change your life? Can you be different? You're looking at yourself now and you can't, you can't fathom you being somebody else you, and you know what's a funny thing you know about the things in you that are not good and who can know more than you your pastor won't know your mother won't know as much as you know you know the things in you that you need to change and what i'm asking is can you just get up one day and just decide that i am going to be different that question is not so much rhetorical because I'm giving you an answer to it and my answer is yes. Yes, you can decide to change your life. Yes, you can change. Yes, you can be different. Yes.